He does the headstand silly on the sideline. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? Welcome to Intentional Lounge. We are back with another Friday episode, breaking down the main slate for week 10. Guys, last week, I was the loser. I was the big loser, so I have to do a Trump impression. That is the big surprise coming up. You guys will have to tune in next week to see what surprise it is, too, because we're going to keep pulling some things out of the bag to give you guys some good content and keep us accountable, too, for our picks. Um, guys, my Trump impression, I kind of started it on the Thursday episode. I'm going to pick up where I left off, but just, wow. I <laughs> didn't lose the entire season, and then it comes Tuesday. What What happened? What happened? All of a sudden, now I'm the loser. Now I'm the loser. You two, look at these two guys. Good looking guys. I like their hats. I like the hats. They're smart guys. Very smart guys. If I'm going to lose, I'm glad it was to these two guys. Um, Ve Vegas, I never lose. Vegas knows I've never lost. So Vegas had to fix these games. They said, Donnie's winning too much. He's winning too much. We, we have to get in front of this. We're going to have to change these games. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Vegas. Do you know what happened now that the election's over? I'll tell you guys what happened. Me and my buddy, J.D. Vance, won the presidential election. I did my J J.D. dance. <laughs> Kamala saw me. She took a J.D. glance at my J.D. pants. Um, I set my feet in my J.D. stance. Um, I had her clearly in her J.D. Uh, trance. Uh, even though I ruined her JD chance at the presidency, so I'm sorry, Kamala. So I'm sorry, Kamala. <laughs> the Patriots last week. What happened with the Patriots? The Patriots lost. The, the Patriots were losing behind me when I was the president. In my administration, the Patriots were losing. <laughs> the Chiefs. They didn't cover. Patrick Mahomes. Good guy, but Baker Mayfield, fantastic guy. <laughs> fantastic guy. Uh, any any questions? Any questions before I have to get back to work making America great again? Uh, I got a couple for you, Mr. President. Uh, I know you're big on uh, endorsements and getting endorsed um, by uh, just, just influencers out there. If you had to choose an NFL team, who would you want their endorsement from the most? What team? Hmm. Great question. Great question. Um, look at these teams. I mean, how could you not pick the Patriots? How could it not be? It's a, it's America first. It's America <laughs> first. It's got to be the Patriots. I love that the Chiefs, the Chiefs, they have that fortitude. They keep their name. They don't <laughs> bow to liberal ideology. Look at look behind me. Look at the lights. They're turning the lights gay. <laughs> Get those lights off. <laughs> Turn the lights off. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, uh, sorry, one more question. Last question for me here. Big night last night for you, obviously. Um, if you had to choose one Super Bowl championship, which one would you pick that most and most closely resembled your win last night? The underdog story, people are calling it the underdog story of all time. <laughs> so what Super Bowl would you say that is most closely related to? I or can't just emotional the, for you? I can't, I, I can't pick the Eagles. I can't do it. They beat the Patriots. I know it's an underdog story. I can't do it. Um, it would have to be probably... What? One of the Packers, because what I'm gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna tighten up that border and we're gonna send them packing. <laughs> Any of the Packers. Beautiful. Trump, question for you. Question. Yes. Uh, now we got fake news over here. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. One at a time. <laughs> Washington. Back to their winning ways over there in D.C. Uh, obviously, big night for you. Uh, how do you feel about your uh, new home team and those Washington commies? And can we please get the Redskins name back? Can we make that a, a big uh, 
priority in your campaign? The Washington Commies. Horrible name. Very bad name. The worst name. Somebody came up to me. They said, Donald, this is a terrible name. How can you have this? I said, I didn't pick the name. I didn't pick the name. I was a genius. I said, just keep the name the way it is. That's the way that people like it. It's it's horrible. One of the worst things that we've ever seen happen. All these teams, they are bending to woke ideology. The commanders. What a bad name. We should just change them to the Washington Al Baghdadis if we are <laughs> if we don't care about America. Bring back the Redskins, bring back American tradition. <laughs> Final question, President Trump. Yes. Uh, looks like we have eyes on Joe Sleepy Joe Biden for the first time since July. Uh, most have forgotten. That is our current president. Uh, <laughs> word on the street, he might have sent a vote your way. Any idea? Uh, did Sleepy Joe Biden wake up to cast a vote for uh, you, Mr. President? Joe. Sleepy Joe. <clears throat> Joe, when you think of him, you think of woke. He has woken. He has woken up, and he did vote for me. He came up. He said, Mr. President, I, I, I beat you in the last one. It was a mistake. I completely ruined this country. I apologize. I said, it's, Joe, it's okay. You didn't know. The American people knew. You're not the one that rigged the election. The liberals rigged the election. And so he said, he told me, he said, Kamala, Kamala, he said, Kamala, I can't vote for her. I can't stand her. I can't even, pay, I can't even stand to be in the same room as her. I sent her to the border just to get her away. And look what she did there. Ah, <laughs> oh, Trump, it's good to have you back in power, man. Uh, so good. Guys, if it's okay, I would like to talk about one of my islands, one of the islands I bought. Would you guys like to go one day? Please. Not that Island, though. Come <laughs> <laughs> down the island. Let's go to Agreement Island. This is the island where we all agree on these picks. We have four teams that we're all on the same side for this week. We have the New York Giants, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Denver Broncos, the Jacksonville Jaguars. We did get a comment on our Instagram post. I don't know if you guys saw it last week. They said, these guys keep picking the Giants, and I'm a Giants fan. I'm shocked. <laughs> so we're all back on the Giants here. How about we start with those Giants? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we're back on them uh, this week. They and you know what? How fitting we just elect Hitler to office. We're playing our first NFL game uh, in Germany of the year. So um, where this is a Munich game, super early, nine thirty a.m. start. Um, but yeah, I mean the Giants coming off a loss to the Commanders, the Panthers coming off a win against the Saints. People are going to see, oh, maybe Bryce Young is back, and the Giants just keep losing. The Giants keep losing by a small margin. And they are much better than, than their 2-7 and seven record indicates. Carolina is, is a very bad team, and it's really hard for a young quarterback to make all the travel to Germany and then play. They just don't traditionally do well. So we're all in agreement that the Giants are going to get it done at Germany against the Panthers. All right, let's move on to Pittsburgh. Yeah, before I get into it, I don't know if you guys realize the flag is even red. The red wave has taken <laughs> over and turned my once yellow flag – swing state color too red so uh very fitting for how that election went. don't you but... don't you dare throw that for the for the results we're not challenging them no no well <laughs> stop stop she's already dead <laughs> <laughs> pittsburgh we love pittsburgh washington uh laying three points at home no way pittsburgh outright pittsburgh off the bye um they do have Baltimore on deck, but I, at this point, they're trying to keep pace with Baltimore. Uh, need to get wins and not just rely on going and beating uh, that Ravens team. Washington is off kind of another fluky win against the Giants. The Giants uh, had two failed two-point conversions, failed to cover my plus four and a half that I had on them, uh, won by the five points. But, I mean, Washington's going to – they're going to crumble here uh, pretty soon, and – 
We think it's this week. Pittsburgh, like I said, off the bye. Mike Tomlin, 12-4 and four coming out of the bye. Six in a row, straight up. Now he's an underdog, catching three. Washington has Philadelphia on deck. Thursday night football, short week. Look ahead on the road. For the division, more than likely. Give us Pittsburgh, money line. We'll take the points, but they went out right. I love it, man. I love it. Let's talk about this Denver game. Um, I'm going to keep this one fairly short. I just want to say a uh, shout-out to a couple of players, Carson Steele, Travis Kelsey, and Bo Nix. There's one thing in common with all those guys, and that is they're all fantastic guys. Um, we got Denver with the plus eight. Um, it's a divisional game. We've got the Chiefs coming off an overtime game. They just played on Monday night, so it's a short week. Got to go to Denver. You're getting over a touchdown. The Chiefs have not been covering these big totals. This one just feels too free. We're going to take the Denver Broncos plus the eight. So, Wyatt, you now have the Jaguars. Yeah, unfortunately, we're on the Jags. The plus four at home against the Vikings. Vikings are the most one of the most popular teams out there. I'm seeing 88% coming in on the Vikes. Jags, very similar to those Giants. I think they're much better than their record indicates. They're always close. Um, they lost by five to Philly last week. They lost by three to Packers the other week. I think they uh, the line's fishy enough that I think they can they can cover the four, potentially win the game. And again, just not super sold on the Vikings in this one. And um, yeah, give me Jacksonville, much better than their record um, indicates. Absolutely. I love it. You guys have anything to add about any of these teams we covered? Did we miss anything? No, sorry that we're on the Giants and the Jags every single week, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll get into that later. Public has been feasting, but that's, that's about to end. Yeah. Yeah. Jacksonville, uh, nice backdoor cover there last week. I think it's really <laughs> yeah. open here this week too. Guys, the first game we're going to talk about is going to be the Buffalo Bills heading to Indianapolis to face the Colts. Colts are three and a half point home dogs. Over and set up 48 and a half. Uh, White, let's start with you. Yeah, um, Ethan brought up the public. I think the favorites last week went like 14 and one or something outright and something like pretty close to that against the spread. And usually favorites um, are the public team. So public keeps feasting. And, you know, this game we're seeing 87% of the bets coming in on Buffalo. Uh, I understand Indy did not look great last week. Um, uh, Joe Flacco, I think, is still the starter. I'm not really mm-hmm. sure. I don't really care. Um, yeah, it's just a fishy line, and people are jumping all over Buffalo like they should. Buffalo continues to win and look good. Indianapolis is an absolute uh, shambles, but it's a fishy line. It's a little little um, small for me. Uh, I think Buffalo should usually be a four, five, six point favorite in this game. The fact they're getting three and a half is just alarm bells going off in my head. So. I'm going to fade the public like I love to always do, and I love to always lose. So um, I'll fade them. But, yeah, Colts plus three and a half. Don't love it, but I do think it is the right betting side. I absolutely love the Colts in this game. Again, I think they win it outright. I know I said that last week against uh, Minnesota. didn't happen, but I love this one even more. Um, I'm actually going to bet it the second we get off the show. I absolutely love Indy in this game. Uh, Buffalo. Off the win against Miami without the cover. I know I liked Miami last week. I bet Miami last week. Um, And I mentioned Buffalo just has to feel so good about themselves. They now, after last week's results, four-game lead in their division. They've already beat the Dolphins twice. They beat the Jets. Uh, They still have a game against the Jets and then two against the Patriots, who I'm sure they are not uh, worried about that Patriots team whatsoever. So they could not be feeling better about where they are. Game against Kansas City on deck. Uh, They're out of division rival uh, over the last few years where, you know, they always prep for that game. They always get up for that game. Then you have Indy off the Sunday night loss uh, up seven, nothing at halftime in that game. And just couldn't put the clamps on in the second half. Couldn't get it done. Um, But they, they have the jets on deck. So there's no look ahead. It's no divisional game or anything of that nature. Uh, Really like Indy just plus the points at home. Colts three and one at home, one and four on the road. So clearly much better home team than they are on the road. Buffalo seven and two on the year, only two losses on the road as well. So everything points to Indianapolis for me here. Love them plus three and a half. If it gets down to two and a half, put them in every single teaser you ever think of. Um, give them to me on the money line too. Indy wins the game. Man. I mean, I've said it a couple of times in the show. I'm definitely the lowest on the Colts. So I am on Buffalo here that, that line, like Wyatt said, is really fishy. And that 
does make me nervous. I'm thinking that maybe the Bills have some injuries and that's what's driving this. Um, we, we've seen like a couple of games this year where teams just get absolutely blown out. I kind of see this kind of being like the Tennessee Buffalo game where it's close in the beginning and then Buffalo pulls away late and they only have to cover the three and a half. So I'm going to be on Buffalo here. This is just a play on Josh Allen just being better and getting it done. Let's talk about a divisional game here. We got the Atlanta Falcons heading to New Orleans to face the Saints. Saints are three and a half point home dogs. Another three and a half point home dog over in our set at 46. Ethan, why don't you start with this one? Cashed my ticket. New Orleans Saints under 10 and a half season wins. So thank you, Vegas, for giving out that line. I have not won since I bet that. So yeah, that was the uh, <laughs> easiest bet I've ever made. Uh, 0-7 in their last seven games. That being said, I like New Orleans here. Again, plus the points and give them to me on the money line. I think they went out right. Um, I am seeing plus four currently. Um, yeah, divisional game. I mentioned it with Atlanta last week. They are already, I believe it's 4-0 in their division. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 4-0 in their division. Obviously, this would uh, be a huge win for them to get to that 5-0 and and only have one divisional game left with basically half the season to go. Um, but same thing to Buffalo. I just think they're feeling very good about where they are. I don't think they're threatened by New Orleans or Carolina, obviously. Um, and their only threat is without their two best weapons. I do think Mike Evans is about to come back, but... Um, they just have such a, a nice lead currently in that division with multiple tiebreakers as well. I just going on the road here. Uh, I think it's just too many points to be honest with you. Even though New Orleans has looked terrible, they fired Dennis Allen. We saw what happened last year when the Raiders fired whoever the hell they had um, and <laughs> kind of rallied around uh, Pierce. I could see it uh, being the same thing here. Just think it's too many points. I like New Orleans to cover, and again, I, I think they went out right. Um, and like I said too, and like why it said favorites are winning at an incredible rate, covering at an incredible rate. Rate I've never seen a public run like we're seeing. Like basically, we just saw all of October. Um, makes me feel a little bit better about getting my ass kicked this entire season. But I do think we're about to make a lot of money here in the month of November. I think it starts this week. A lot of dogs. Give me New Orleans plus the points and money line. I like him too. I must have missed the uh, the trade where Mike Evans got traded to the Saints. Um, <laughs> I think you accidentally said Mike there. Um, oh. Mike's on the Bucks. Uh, I think London is or not London. Oh, London's on the Falcons. I don't know. All these teams I get mixed up: Bucks, <laughs> Saints, and the Falcons. They all they're all the same type of team, and I get them all mixed up too. So Drake London uh, is on the Falcons. Chris Olave pissed himself last week. He's probably not going to be back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I get uh, these these teams are all they are all the same team. But yeah, I'm on the Saints um, as well. Eighty six percent of the bets coming in on the Falcons. Uh, Saints just coming off a loss to uh, the Panthers with um, Derek Carr coming back again. It's the system. You fade the quarterback his first game back from injury. You're on him the second game. It's it's basic systems. And then whenever I don't take them, they hit. Um, and whenever I take them, they don't. Unfortunately, I was not on the. Um, I gave it out, but was not on the Panthers um, last weekend. And of course, they went it outright. So um, I like the Saints simply for that reason. And again, I'm fading the public as well this week. Can't trust an 86% spread, um, especially with just a small little line of four. Seems pretty obvious to take the Falcons. So give me the Saints. I agree with Ethan. I think they went outright. I'm on the Falcons here. I just think the Saints are so banged up. I think the Saints are so banged up. And then, like, they get the new coach here. I just think that, like, the Raiders did good with Pierce because Pierce really fits the Raiders well. Like, they're just a, they're not the greatest players, but they're tough and they're gritty and they'll get after it. The Saints, I mean, this is just an old team that's kind of dead in the water coming off a of Panthers loss, which I think that that makes me most concerned is because losing, that, losing that game might have them kind of – reevaluating things and being like, damn, if we really just lost to the Panthers, we might need to like make some big changes. I just don't think it's enough. I think they're too banged up. And the Falcons coming off a, a win versus the Cowboys, which is another, well, supposedly good team, but they they, they, they haven't looked like it this season. Um, I'm going to take Atlanta here. Once again, the, the line I think makes more sense here, but I just think the Falcons are just, they're so much more healthy and they've got so much, 
like better guys right now. They'll have one and they'll have Pitts. They'll have Bijan. Algier just looks like he sucks this year, but still, like that offensive line's still good. I don't know, man. There's just too much negative going on right now with the Saints for me. Just like outside of just the like numbers. It just feels like the yeah. vibes are bad there. Kind of like you were saying, Ethan, like that ticket cashed, dude, they might not win another game this season. I hope because I have a lot more on under seven and a half wins. And <laughs> I think you're okay. I'm going to have to go six and two, but um, two things quick, just to clarify the Mike Evans thing. I think I was saying that uh, Atlanta wasn't threatened by Tampa, mm. gotcha. especially without their weapons. However, gotcha. they were close to getting Mike back. Um, also, just have to say about New Orleans head coach, the interim, I believe, is our special teams coordinator, which seems super weird. Uh, and also, it makes me wonder if they miss Dan Campbell. Yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, if the Titans ever if the, if the Titans ever fire their head coach and they start their special teams coordinator, we are going <laughs> to hammer the other team. <laughs> That's the worst coach in football. It's got to be. Anyways. <laughs> Let's talk about this next game. We've got the New England Patriots heading to Chicago to face the Bears. Bears are six-point home favorites over and set at 38-and-a-half. Now, here's some bullshit. These two guys have been telling you not to take the favorites. Um, and so I switched to New England here, and these two mother fluffers are both on the fucking Bears, dude. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to steal your guys' picks. I just noticed that, and I was like, God, like, come on, man. Um, I don't know. With this game, I think that... Caleb Williams, we've seen, he's so inaccurate. And this New England Patriots defense hasn't been as good as I kind of expected them to be, but I don't think they have to be that good here. And you're getting almost a touchdown. You're getting the plus six. This might just be another, like, low-scoring game. Ramondre can get in the end zone maybe a couple times, one or two times, and the Bears win this game by three, by four. I just think the six is too much here for a guy that's so inaccurate. That That's my thought process. Uh, Ethan, what are you thinking? Yeah, I like the Bears laying the six. I also picked them for my survivor for this week for what that's worth. But I think New England's just showing themselves to be the worst team in football. Uh, I mean, the Titans are not good. I know they brought them to overtime. I know they went out and beat uh, whoever New England beat the week before that. I think they got a win before that. Am I wrong yeah. on that? Was that the Jets? The Jets, beat right? the Jets. The Jets, yeah. I'm just not bought into New England. Um, and I think Chicago – you know, we all liked Arizona last week. I ended up kind of flipping on that. I'm glad, uh, Ben, you gave that one out to us as our uh, squad ride. So, great pick by you. I'm glad that hit. Um, but I really think the Bears have struggled picking themselves up off the mat after that Hail Mary, and I think it showed. Then they had to travel all the way out west to Arizona. You know, I think it's – they almost – like, had they beat Washington, who knows? They might go out and beat Arizona. So, I really just think that was a – kind of just a bad spot for them after the way they lost the Washington game. Now they have a chance to get right against, like I said, maybe the worst team in football. Um, and then not only that, 4-4 four and four on the year for the Bears, 4-0 and oh at home, 0-4 oh on the road. So clearly just a, a massive home field edge for them. Uh, minus six, I mean, it's kind of gross. You're, you got to lay six points with the Bears who neither of the three of us really think they're that good. They only put up nine against the Cardinals. 15 against Washington. They're not scoring in bunches. Just kind of think the line is off. Uh, I like Chicago to kind of run away with this one. Yeah. I mean, people, yeah, I, I don't, I think people think the Patriots do suck. Um, they lost to the Titans, but they did show glimpses of being decent. I know Drake may add that, uh, that overtime or that, that touchdown at the end of the game that caused overtime um phenomenal play just scrambling and then throwing a kind of a hail mary pass um not really but um phenomenal play, play to extend the um the play there and score a touchdown to tie it um but they ultimately lost to the titans who looked embarrassing um two weeks ago then you got these bears who just got absolutely shit their shit kicked in against the cardinals lost on a hail mary two weeks ago to the commies everyone over on social media uh, everyone's a very passionate bears fan is calling for their head coach's head um want them fired um so i this could either go two ways. It's either going to go Chicago is going to get destroyed and they fire their coach on the spot or they win and calm down the crowd here a little bit. So um, I'm going to go with the fact that I think people are seeing glimpses of the Patriots and people are just super caught up that the Bears suck. They just got destroyed by the Cardinals, that they're going to be eager to jump on the pads at the plus six. 
So for that reason, I'll, I'll take the Bears. I'll have whatever their head coach's name. I don't know how to pronounce it. It starts with an E. But whenever Eberflus, yeah, I, I think he lasts a couple more weeks. I, I don't think he's going to last the season, but a couple more weeks as the head coach here, and um, yeah, I'll take the Bears to cover the six. All right, man. We got the San Francisco 49ers headed to Tampa Bay to face the Bucks. Bucks are six point home dogs. Over and sit at fifty and a half. Ethan, let's start with you. Yeah, I've loved a lot of the opinions we've given out so far on the show, so I'm glad the next few I don't love, uh, which is going to help save me from unloading this weekend because I'm trying to be more selective. But um, I'm taking the points with Tampa, and it's not a play I love. I'm simply just, like I said, I think the favorites are going to start losing, the dogs are going to start covering and winning outright. So mostly for that reason, I'm just going to take Tampa. I also just think people are looking at San Fran off a bye. Uh Potentially McCaffrey back is what I'm – I'm not sure if he's officially back or not. Um, you know, I think McCaffrey moves point spreads. He doesn't, but the public thinks he does. Um, you know, they just think San Fran's going to be back to the healthy team that we're used to seeing. I'm not buying into it fully. I know uh, Tampa off the tough Monday night football loss. It might be a little bit of that bears effect that, you know, it's tough to get them off the mat. Obviously, Baker was pretty frustrated. It looked like that they not only didn't go for two, but then lost the coin toss and never got another shot on the field. They do have their buy on deck, though, which I think is a positive. Um, you know, if they can go out and get this win at home against San Fran, go into their buy, they can get healthy, uh, which they desperately need. So it's not a game I'm in love with, but I'm going to lean towards the side of Tampa plus the points. Yeah, I totally forgot about McCaffrey. It makes me hate this pick. Um, but I'm on San Fran, I guess. Uh, really, I guess this is probably my least favorite one. Um, that McCaffrey news makes me immediately want to take Tampa. But for the sake of the show, I'll, I'll stick with my gut play, and that is San Fran. Simply because Tampa Bay, they still don't have anyone. Um, you know, God went out for the year. Mike Evans, hamstring. Uh, McMillan, whatever his name is, out with a hammy. Um, Kate Otten's an absolute tank. But Rashad White – or not Rashad White um, – Bucky Irving's banged up. Uh, there are a couple other wide receivers have hamstring issues. They still almost win games, and I don't know why. And people are going to see that. People have seen that and say, we can get them at five and a half points at home. And that's what I'm going to go with. Again, I don't feel super confident because I completely blanked on the McCaffrey news. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Tampa Bay keeps covering, and I don't know how. I have no idea how they do it, but they do. So um, I'll take a shot on San Fran to uh, to hopefully blow them out in this game. Um Again, McCaffrey coming back makes absolutely no difference. Like Ethan said, we saw um, Mason just become the best running back in the league the first couple of weeks of the season because, again, San Fran has the best offensive line. They have the most weapons, opens up their run game. doesn't matter who's back there. Anyone with a capable leg, legs um, and decent ball carrier moves is going to do just fine. So he doesn't move lines. Um, but, yeah, don't love this game. Probably my least favorite, but I'll take San Fran. San Fran, I love this game. Nick Bosa, hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. Love that guy. Love the Niners. Um, really, my thought process here is it's the total fade on Tampa. I know we've been talking about how Tampa has been covering. They have been really good. Tampa's been a team I've been riding quite a bit this season. But they're coming off that overtime loss. And I know it's you can't blame the head coach, but I think some of those guys in that locker room, you heard the announcers talking about it, like go for two, go for two. I think there's probably going to be quite a bit of behind the scenes just like like what are we doing man like i think they lost a little bit of confidence in the coach there uh maybe they come out and they don't want to listen as much they come out they're just kind of like oh man like you know what are you yapping about like i'm just gonna go out there and try to make a play i don't like the spot for tampa i really don't san fran like you guys said mccaffrey coming back it, it doesn't do anything for me because i was talking to the doctor we have for the show and he is very concerned if McCaffrey does come back this season that it could lead to an Achilles rupture so it's like I you know him coming back doesn't bother me at all they're doing just fine with Jordan Mason um but this Tampa Bay team is too banged up the San Fran team also if they were like the normal San Fran team they're just like mowing teams over and look so good um then this might be a spot where they can get caught even coming out of the bye but they haven't been that good this year so I feel like they really need to be locked in <laughs> And trying to, kind of like the Chiefs when they start getting good towards the end of the season, they need to start hitting that peak. Because if you're going to go back to the Super Bowl, which is what their goal is, you need to start 
playing better. Like this is the time, November, December, you got to start going in the right direction. I just think this is a really bad spot for Tampa. So I'm, I'm off of them. I think San Fran needs this game. Give them to me. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Tampa's head, Tampa's head coach. Say, <laughs> that's I, I have never seen name. that guy smile. <laughs> I've never seen him move his mouth. I don't think I've ever seen him blink. Every time they show him, it's always like way up in his face. He's just... <laughs> it's Todd Bowles, isn't it? Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. yeah something like yeah. that. <laughs> Good or bad, just you're yep. so right. Dude. <laughs> you're so right. Uh, let's talk about this next game, guys. We got Tennessee heading to Los Angeles to face the Chargers. Chargers are seven and a half point home favorites. Over under set at thirty nine. Uh, Wyatt, why don't you take this one? I'm all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll take the Chargers. I guess um, this seems like a ten point Chargers win. Um, that's what I'm going to go with. Twenty to ten. That's going to be the final. Uh, love the under would be my favorite bet in this game, but I'll take them on the spread. I mean, the Chargers, how many of these games are they just going to keep getting? Like, they don't play anyone. This is a, yeah. another terrible game to watch. Chargers are going to win it, probably by a touchdown, hopefully 10, like I said, because I need them to cover the seven and a half. But just an ugly game that sucks. And it, it just, yeah, I don't like the Chargers. Well, I do like the Chargers because my boy Jimmy, but they're not a good football team. And the fact that they are whatever record they are right now, I don't have it off the top of my head, but. They're not good, and they're going to get absolutely smoked. Come if they make the postseason, if they play a good team, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna win this one by ten, low scoring game. I'll take the Chargers just because the Tennessee Titans are ass. Can I hop in here to try to see if I can sway Ethan? Okay. Yeah. All right. The Titans right now, guys, have the number one pass defense. Did you know that? They're the number one team against the pass. Here's who they played though. They faced Caleb Williams in his first game in the NFL. They faced the Jets, who were very terrible to start the season. They faced the Packers without Love, the Dolphins without Tua, the Colts with Flacco, um, the Bills and Josh Allen's worst game of the season, the Lions, Jared Goff only threw 15 times because so they were able to run all over them. Um, and then they lost to the Patriots in overtime with a rookie Drake May. This is a bad team. Like I, I don't, I, Those stats are so skewed. The number one pass defense, just stop with that. Um, I like LA and just kind of like that um, Detroit game. Los Angeles Chargers, I'm going to say it every single week, man. Their goal is just pound the ball with this offensive line they've invested in and run their dudes. I think maybe Kamani Vidal has a touchdown. J.K. Dobbins has a touchdown. I think we might have two, three, maybe even four rushing touchdowns in this game. I like the Chargers a lot here. Yeah, I was uh, starting to get a little bit queasy uh, talking about that, that Chicago-New England game back there. The puke was inching up the throat a little bit um to be honest with you i forgot to vomit in my mouth so <laughs> i'm now gonna vomit in my mouth for this game the puke in the mouth game of the week Good thing I'm gonna vomit. tennessee and la ben great points um on tennessee i completely agree their stats are completely skewed it's easy to have the best uh, pass defense when teams aren't passing on you after halftime. So, um, yeah, completely agree. <laughs> that being said, uh, it's not a game I'm excited about at all. Two two things, simply. L.A. off a blowout against the Browns. I'm just not super impressed. I think it uh, gives them a little bit of an edge when Tennessee uh, struggled to beat the Patriots. And then again, I just – for lack of no other reason, just taking the the team plus the points where I think the underdogs are going to start coming back around. So, um, yeah, I mean, if I, if you were looking to bet Tennessee, Ben, I think, you know, you would have talked me off if I was looking to bet the Titans. I'm not, um, but for the show, I'm going to stick with Tennessee here. Just take the points, but I hate that game. Uh, That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I can't blame you for taking the points there. Let's talk about this divisional game, guys. The Philadelphia Eagles heading to Dallas to face the Cowboys. Cowboys are seven-point home dogs over and set at 43. So, I think there's one big factor in this game. I think Sirianni is going to shut that crowd down. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's the 30th worst rush defense in Dallas. Show the gun. Show the gun. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> just walk, <laughs> just walking down the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all can't He's, tell me nothing. <laughs> he does the headstand, Sally, on the sideline. <laughs> Or just a, a regular first down in their own territory, yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey Laurie, please never fire that man. He's too, he's too good, man. He's too good for our content. I even got a message today about our meme recap. They said that Sirianni was just a gold. I was like, thank you. I actually had it even like spicier than I had it, but I was like, I know I'm going to settle down a little bit. We'll save that one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 30th worst, 30th worst rush defense in Dallas, 27th overall. I, I I get the like the injured player theory with the I think it's Cooper Rush that's going to be playing. I just uh, Philly as fraudulent as they are, Dallas has just been so bad this year. I just can't get behind Dallas at the seven. Once again, divisional game, you're getting touchdown. Dallas is at home. Like I totally get people taking Dallas here. It's just so much has gone wrong for Dallas, and I just don't trust Mike McCarthy, like, at all. So, uh, why? what do you think? Yeah, I'll keep this one quick. My backup quarterback theory. Um, Cooper yep. Rush making the start. I take that team usually almost automatically. Uh, I think the line sometimes gets moved a little too much there. Um, we'll be fading him the next game. But, yeah, I'll take the Cowboys at home. Uh, I'm also seeing 83% of the bets coming in on Philly, so a little bit of a fade on the public as well. But, yeah, simply following the the backup quarterback on his first start theory in this one. So Cowboys plus seven for me. Yeah, Dallas plus seven for me as well. like it actually a lot um, with the quarterback theory, uh, especially Cooper Rush. I mean, this dude's played a lot of right. NFL snaps. He's won. I think he gave – uh minnesota fraudulent minnesota two years ago or three even um their first loss i believe they were like 11 to no or he i know he beat them i'm not sure if it was their first loss or maybe their second but i mean this dude's been around um yeah i i trust cooper rush at home here plus a full touchdown against like you said uh just a fraudulent philly team which we all know and love um and Philly, like, I, I can just feel this. I fell for the trap in the offseason. They were minus 125 to win the division, and I figured Dallas was not going to be anywhere as good as what they were. Um, my fear was Washington, but I just didn't think they would be nearly as good as what they are, and I just fell for it. I did a five-unit bomb, Philly, to win that division, minus 125. It felt so easy. It seemed so easy, and it's they're probably going to lose it. So um, it's just the way I'm feeling right now that – that was a trap line. I fell for it. So I, I do think Philly starts losing some games here. Uh, I think they've gotten kind of lucky. Um, their schedule has been pretty easy. I don't know if they do lose this one, uh, but they do have Washington on deck again, Thursday night football at home, which really is going to uh, put some distance between those two for that division lead. So yeah, I think Philly feels like they can go into Dallas, get a win against Cooper Rush, get out of there, start uh, looking towards that short week Thursday night game against Washington, which is a game they, at this point, care more about. So I like Dallas plus the points, and, yeah, don't call me shocked if they also get the upright, outright win as a dog. Oof. Man, that's spicy. Hey, tell me you guys can't see this. Dak out. They're, like, starting, what, Dalvin Cook maybe at running back. They did get Mingo, though. Big, big <laughs> alpha or uh, traded line acquisition there. Uh, Micah Parsons doesn't play. <laughs> they just blow out a Cowboys team that's missing everybody. <laughs> Sirius walking down the sideline with a send help sign. Just. Spray <laughs> <laughs> paint SOS in the middle of their field. Yeah, their left tackle is just like some local math teacher that they pulled out of one of the schools. That's like the assistant JV coach of the football team. Just, hey, hey, we're them, man. <laughs> Let's talk about this horrible game. This is the New York Jets heading to Arizona to face the Cardinals. Cardinals are one-point home dogs. We're going to sit at 46. What is stranger, Arizona having hail or the New York Jets getting a win? because <laughs> both happened both happened last week um aaron roger man of the darkness what do you think here Ethan? this is a one point spread this is this is a pick'em, dude rogers is gonna ride this red wave 
to a Super Bowl. He's got to be feeling <laughs> so good about himself. Uh, <laughs> no, I like the Jets. I don't love it. Uh, extra time to prepare. They finally got that elusive, like, solid win. Um, Thursday night football against Houston, which I'm down on Houston, but whatever. Um, yeah, and now, you know, I have to travel to Arizona. I think Arizona's feeling pretty good about themselves after – beating Chicago. They do have a buy on deck. It's not a game I'm super uh, crazy about, but I'm not counting out the Jets yet. Um, Arizona does have a divisional lead, so I don't know. I thought they would uh, be a decent right around 500 team this year, maybe eight, nine wins. Um, but they might fe- be feeling pretty good about themselves. I doubt they thought they were in contention for the division with what people thought the Rams were going to do, San Fran, obviously, and then Seattle's always tough. So, uh, yeah, it's a small lean on the Jets. It's not a play that I'm looking to necessarily get involved with. Yeah, I wish I could fade both teams here. Um, obviously, yeah. both teams off wins. Jets uh, finally get a win with uh, the fired coach and the addition of Devontae Adams. Only took them a couple of weeks to do that. Um, and then the Cardinals off a big win against the Bears. Um, so, again, I wish I could fade both. I do think the Jets are more of the team that people want to bet on. So, um, the fact that I'm seeing Arizona as a slight favorite um, is making me want to take Arizona here. I understand Arizona's at home, long travel, but um, just seems like people are going to jump on the Jets just to continue to to ride their wave, like Ethan was saying. Um, and they are the better team uh, in my mind. Um, so they should win this. But for the sake of it, uh, I'm going to take a shot on Arizona. Probably won't be betting this game, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take Arizona. Maybe James Conner kind of touchdown will be just a really solid, easy play if he's playing. Um, The Jets' rushing defense is not great. So maybe that'll be a play for me. But I'll take Arizona for the graphic. Don't love this game whatsoever. I kind of like the under here. I think that this is going to be a really boring game. I think Arizona, Kyler Murray's going to be able to scramble around enough that just this Jets team has been very, um, very overrated defense. And I think that he can just keep getting these first downs and keep grinding that clock. This might be another one of those games where you just see, like, field goal after field goal after field goal. Um Especially, you know what, Arizona, you're going to be in a dome. You don't have to worry about the weather. Jets, I mean, it, did, it felt like it didn't even matter with the weather. They were just missing every single kick. But now their line's gone, so maybe maybe that helps. I am on Arizona here. I, I just can't get back on the Jets right now. I think we were all on the – yeah, we were all on them against Houston last week. And so it's like I said I started. I'm like, I could never pick this team again. And then I picked them. Well, this is me starting to not pick them. Maybe I'm on the wrong side here. They just look so bad. And I just don't trust Aaron Rodgers. And then they made one huge mistake. They traded away Mike Williams. The whole season's over. Just throw it, <laughs> pitch it in, dude. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm on Arizona here. I really – don't have a lot to say about it either, so I'm going to talk about this next game. That is Detroit heading to Houston. Houston is three and a half point home dogs over and instead of 49. I don't know who's on Houston here. We're a very anti-Houston pro Lions podcast, but clearly we're split. I'm on Detroit here. Houston, I know they've had more time to prepare. Detroit, man, Detroit's good. Detroit is just so good. Dan Campbell is coaching these guys really well. I like Detroit. Three and a half doesn't feel like enough. The president of Dome, Jared Goff, I think he can get. I think he can get going. I think Laporte is going to have a good game here too. I know, like Amon Ra, didn't have too good of a game. He hasn't had too good of a season, but I think he's going to be pretty decent here. I like I like the Lions here. Also, Houston, their defense has been better than I think people expected, but I don't know, man. I like Detroit. I like Detroit. I really think that they can run the ball. Why? What do you think? Yeah, I hate this team, but I'm on Houston to cover here. Um, again, Detroit is is doing everything. They're winning all the games. I don't know how many they've won in a row. Um, it's been quite a bit. They, you know, they're two and zero in the division. Big win against uh, the Vikings and a big win last week against the Packers. Uh, you mentioned the Dome team that was their first game outside. Debatably, one of the worst weather games of the season, and yet the Detroit still won by ten in that game for not being able to play in the conditions. They proved everyone wrong. Um, including myself last week. Um, and now they go uh, and play the, you know, the Texans, who I've been a downer on the Texans all year. It's because I can't stand C.J. Stroud. Um, but the Texans coming off a loss to the Jets. Um, obviously, injury concerns. I'm not sure what Nico Collins' status is. I think he's supposed to be coming back soon. Um, 
And then obviously Diggs is out. So they're, they're left with a few options. So I just think it's easy to continue to ride the Detroit train here. They prove everyone wrong. I think they're seven and one against the spread too. Uh, they're one of the best um, against the spread teams out there. So it is a small line. I think Detroit should be much more of a favorite, honestly, even though it is at Houston. Um, so I'm gonna take a shot. I'm gonna take a shot on Houston to cover here. Um, I never bet against my boys, so I won't bet it. I'll probably go to the player prop route. I do like the Laporta to hopefully get back involved on this offense. Um, but death taxes and, and David Montgomery to score, unless I put money on it, is a pretty free bet out there. But, um, yeah, I'll, I think the Texans might win this one out, right? Honestly, it's it's Ooh. kind of a meaningless AFC game for Detroit. Um, again, two huge divisional wins against the Vikings and the Packers. They're feeling pretty damn good about themselves. Um, I can see them getting caught off guard here, especially um, – terrible secondary i i make fun of the lion secondary every week it's probably not as bad as i think it is but it's it's pretty damn bad every time i watch them uh cj stroud will probably dice him up so um do love cj stroud um to get going um in the passing game yeah i uh yeah i mean the lions are like they're they're just so good they're like a they different are. good than than what i've really seen from a lot of teams like these spots that teams should falter in they just have not yet i loved green bay last week absolutely loved them and it was just the way wrong side um that being said i'm i'm, I'm kind of looking to fade detroit here in the future um and i i'm looking to fade houston as well so in this game i do have the lions i know houston's already taking some public money i have been on a ton of dogs obviously i don't think uh or some favorite probably does have to win this week and cover. Um, so I hope it's Detroit. I think it's Detroit. You know, as much as I want to fade Detroit against the spread, I want to fade Houston more. I'm just so not bought into Houston. Houston reminds me of last year's Philly team where, you know, it's not similar the way they're winning games where Philly was just winning by the seat of their pants every single week. And then finally the floor fell out from under them and they lost six of seven or whatever it was. But I do think Houston's just – I think they're going to have a, a losing uh, run on the way here. Um, they already lost to the Jets. I think they lose to Detroit here, and I think it could just, you know, start getting pretty ugly for the Texans, to be honest with you. They have the Cowboys, um, two easier games, but divisional games against the Titans and Jags, and then they do have the Dolphins, Chiefs, Ravens. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I'm really looking to fade both these teams down the stretch, to be honest. So I hate saying that about Detroit. I just don't think they can keep winning and covering the way they have been. I think they'll still win some games, a lot of games, just maybe not covering the spread. So, yeah, I'm just uh, kind of waiting for the the floor to fall out from under Houston. I I think it could be this week. Um, I know Houston's public, like I said, as well. Three and a half. It seems very easy to take those points with the home team. So I will take Detroit um, to win and cover that one. All right, man. Well, that is the game, so we're going to cover. If you want to see the Monday Night Football game, you guys are going to have to tune into that episode on Monday. So we're going to send it to Ethan now for our squad ride of the week for Week 10. Ethan. Yeah, this week with our squad ride, we are backing the Pittsburgh Steelers plus the three points in Washington. Uh, like I said earlier, we all think they win this game outright. Um, squad ride's been been pretty damn good this season, so... You know, of all the bets we give out on the show, that's probably a good one to listen to. And to be honest with you, Pittsburgh is one of my more confident squad rides of the season. Absolutely. And you guys can get that over on DraftKings, our friends over there. So make sure you guys check them out. To make it easy for you, we do have a link in the description. You click it, choose which state you guys are in, and they'll show you all the promos that we have going on. We recommend DraftKings. That is the one that we use for our odds. So make sure you guys check that out. Ethan, let's stay with you for the big, uh, yeah, big three. Yeah, my first uh, – well, yeah, if squad rider wasn't Pittsburgh, they would be in there. I just love Pittsburgh this week. But I'm going to go Indianapolis plus three and a half. I'm going to go Dallas plus seven. And I'm going to go Denver plus eight. Love them all. Call me crazy. I think they all have a nice shot to win outright. I hope so. Um, I'm going to be on Dallas at the plus seven uh, against Philly. Uh, I'm going to take a teaser. Uh, I'm 0 for 4 in teasers this year, so probably do not tail, but I'm going to take the Chargers, a six-point teaser, teaser. So I'm going to take the Chargers at the minus one and a half and the Giants at the minus half a point. Um, should come out to around 110, maybe 120, depending 
where you go. Um, and then I'm going to do a player prop here. I'm going out of the blue. Um, I'm going to take CJ Stroud over passing yards. I'm seeing right now in DraftKings, you can get it at 228 and a half at minus 115. Just so you guys know, I will be taking him to get 300 passing yards. That is plus 650. Um, it's way too good of an odds for a guy that is more than capable of doing that against a Detroit secondary that is no bueno. So I will be taking that, but I'm not going to give out a plus 600 for my uh, big three. So 228 and a half for Stroud. Um, he'll get that, I think, almost in the first half. I love it, man. I love it. Uh, shout out to Justin Reed for dropping my interception and killing my big three last week. Just nothing kills you like your own guys doing it to you. Uh, <laughs> my big three, I have the Philly Dallas under 42. This could be a game, like we said, Philly's really fraudulent. So, you know, if they're not scoring and Dallas has all these backup guys, this might be a real stinker of a game. Um, I got Detroit minus the three and a half. I really think your guys get it done. And then I have Denver plus the eight. On your guys, fading my guys. Um, you know, this is a game we still haven't lost since Ethan's horrible Christmas. Um, this is kind of like one of those games where we can get caught. It always seems like when we're if we're doing really good and we have a streak going, it's always like that divisional game that gets you caught up. So I think that this – I don't think we lose, but it's a game where, like, if Patrick Mahomes has a bad game, like he played pretty decent last week, but, like, if Sir Tang can get a pick or two, this game just might be really, really ugly. They might get the outright win. So, the Denver plus A, it, it feels free. I'm riding with it. Love it. Coming from Chiefs fan, too. Yes. Sadly. Sadly. that I don't hate the Broncos as much as I hate the Raiders, but yeah, definitely don't like them. Um, guys, if you want to see the Monday uh, picks, you guys need to watch the Monday video. These two will also be live on Monday. I will be live on Tuesday breaking down the fantasy waiver wire ads. Make sure you tune in for all of our content. We have UFC. We have um, college basketball, NBA, hockey. We got we cover it all, guys. These guys call, cover college football, and they're doing an excellent job over there. So make sure you guys subscribe to the page. Make sure you like, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace, guys. Later, guys. Thanks for taking time out of your day, Trump. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Flexing on the haters can't touch my score. Money like Jerry Rice touched out the lore. Week after week, always asking for more. Bling on the wrist, got the books on the floor. Listen in, cash out, bitches swelling. Plays on the field, see me winning, never dwelling. Flagged on Vegas, they know what I'm selling. NFL bets keep the cheesy compelling. Flexing on the haters can't touch my score. Money like.